This is going out to anybody out there that does struggle with having rest days or feeling guilty when you're not at work or you're not doing something productive. Uh, this is for you. Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of Inside the Genie's Lamp. I'm your host, T. Muzz. Man, I, f I fucking hate everything about that already. <laughs> that is, oh, I had a full thing I could do. Nah, soon as I started, committed to it, instantly bailed. Instantly burnt the ship out at sea. Not doing that. <laughs> and I know I said I'd do it in the last episode, but fuck it, it's free. <laughs> you get this for free, so suck it. Um, well, if, if this is the first episode that you're listening to of the podcast, I suppose that's pretty much the podcast in a nutshell, really, of just, it's not that professional. Highly valuable, but my God, it's not professional. It's like I'm just sitting in the passenger seat and just talking nonsense while you focus on driving. And I'm like, does she hate me? She probably hates me. I'm going to keep talking. Um, anywho, this one is an interesting one because... It's not reflecting the two weeks that I had off whenever, how long ago it is by the time you're listening to this. It's not reflecting the two weeks that I had off from that sickness. This is when I was forced to take time off earlier. And this is going out to anybody out there that does struggle with having rest days or feeling guilty when you're not at work or you're not doing something productive or there's not that two, three, four to-do list thing of, if I don't get everything done today, I'm gonna feel terrible and anxious and absolutely hate my life and guilty. Uh, this is for you. Uh, so, there has been in the past two months, uh, probably like, I think it's like three, four weeks off that I've been forced to take off. It has even gotten to the point where, I mean, I've intentionally set this part up of I'm not taking on any more clients until after July. Um, well, until July, when I come back from a two week holiday, because that's when a schedule shift changes. That's when my programs that I offer completely change as well. It's a whole thing. So the, the big thing that's happened with that is as I'm not accepting clients, obviously, there are clients that are finishing up their programs, whether they've done three months, six months, 12 months, whatever, people are finishing their program with me. And now up until July, there's, I think around 10, 12 clients that are finishing up with me in that time, which is then freeing me up to obviously change my schedule and do a whole bunch of other stuff in the meantime, which has been sad because I always say to myself, no, I can take on more clients. I can do this. I can do that. But amazing for the fact that now I actually have a weekend. Now I actually have a potential Friday, uh, potential Saturday, Sunday, which is awesome. That's, I honestly can't remember the last time that's fucking happened ever. Um, it's a wild concept, so bear with me. I know it's, it's a bit weird, but in the past two months, like let's just say this year, 2022, I have taken more days off in 2022 and it's uh, halfway through than, so we're in June, than I reckon since the start of 2016, up until December 31st, 2021, I reckon I've had to take more days off and have taken more days off in 2022 than that five and a half years combined. It's ridiculous. The amount of foundation work that I did for all of this, mainly because I was mentally unstable. Well, still am. Um, and having that rest was, nope, I'm not doing it. I even got a bartending job because I was like, well, I don't want to have a day off. I'd rather go 10 bar and make some money and work and do that. So that's what I did. Um, but I actually enjoyed it, which was a weird thing. I think because I wasn't invested and it was like, hey, I'm just here to have, have fun and do whatever and make money, make terrible money. Uh, but here to have fun and just chill. Uh, so yeah, now that I think about it, that actually wasn't a bad gig. 12 till 5 on Friday, not really busy. Meet with a lot of people. Um, and drink. Not enough that I couldn't drive, but just a drink here and there. So that was really fun. And anywho, got off track there. So, why am I saying all of this? Get to the fucking point, Travis. Okay, I will. Forced rest is making me... It started as forced rest, and now it's to the point of, that actually feels pretty good, I'm 
gonna see if I can keep doing that. The forced rest initially felt fucking awful. I hated it, didn't want to do it. I don't want to take time off, I'm not gonna do this. A lot of resistance around, I shouldn't have to rest, I shouldn't have to take time off in this, and I shouldn't, 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 shouldn't. It's all shoulds. Ultimately, the reason why I've had to take time off is COVID and then sinusitis, which led to laryngitis, which means I don't have a fucking voice. I can't talk, I can't breathe, I can't read, I can't focus on anything. So that forced time off was, oh my God, I feel so fucking bad, I can't even speak right now. That was me. That was me in a nutshell. And that time off, hated it. Coming back on the first week, hated it. And I, it just sort of reinforced for me, time off, is fucking awful. If you just keep working forever, that way, you're never out of a funk. You can just always stay in the stay in the groove of it. As I've realized and as I've matured in the past three months, <laughs> I've matured a lot in the past three months, darling. What I've realized is taking time off has made me so much more productive forcing myself, when healthy, to take that time off and say, no, Saturday I'm going, I don't know, house hunting with Beth. I'm chilling around the house, I'm doing some yard work, I'm catching up with friends, I'm doing this, doing that, whatever it is. Having a full day followed up with, you guessed it, another full day, I know, bear, bear with me for all my high functioning and anxious people out there, two days off in a row and forcing myself this, this was the hard part, forcing myself to not think about work, to shut the laptop, to get away from it, to do something that would occupy my brain elsewhere, do something that I physically wanted to do, something that was going to help me zone out and get away from work. The stupid thing about it, when it started, yes, there was a lot of resistance, didn't want to do it. I was like, this is just wasted time. Why don't I just work? Because then I can just get stuff done. The thing about it is when I look at that, what I would have done for working is stuff that I could have done in 15 minutes on a Monday or a Tuesday or whenever I feel like getting back to work, whenever I have to get back to work. 15 minutes of getting back on track with everything. But because I felt like I had to be working, I stretched that 15 minute thing out to about an hour or two, probably two hours. And then being like, wow, what a productive day. I spent two hours working. No, I didn't. I spent 15 minutes working and stretching it out, watching something in the background, farting around, scrolling on TikTok, doing fuck all. Oh my God, it's been two hours? Fantastic. Some arbitrary amount of time had passed. Awesome. Therefore, I am productive. Hashtag getting after it. Hashtag grinding. Hashtag hustle season. Whatever the fuck we want to put towards it. That's what I was doing, really. And now that I'm actually forcing myself to take time off, or I have had time take, I have had to take time off, explicitly told by, <laughs> oh, the irony of this, explicitly told by my psychologist, you need to take time off or you're not going to have a business in a year. I was like, hmm, that seems bad, particularly that I've, if you're new to this show, welcome. Um, particularly the fact that I have had two personal training businesses previous to this, one, the first one lasted a year and then it blew up because of mental health issues of which I was not resting, recovering and doing anything for myself. I was giving everything to my clients and not doing anything for me. Eventually, mental burnout, breakdown, holy shit, can't do this. Went back to it six months later, tried it again. That personal training business lasted eight months. Exact same thing happened, completely burnt out. You can't pour from an empty cup. That, uh, that essentially happened and burnt out. Went and tried a whole slew of jobs, including real estate. Holy fuck. I do not want to be a real estate agent. That was fucking terrible. Um, and then came back to do this. And now I was like, right, I'm in. I'm committed. This is it. This is me forever. This is what I want to do. And here we are. Hello. Welcome. So, forcing myself to take time off now. Yes, it was difficult. It started off hard. It was something I didn't want to do and I didn't really see the point of it. But if I can give this piece of advice to the people out there that are high functioning anxiety or just a guilty, feel incredibly guilty for not taking time off for wanting to do that thing or work on their passion project or do work or you're a self-employed or you're a business owner or a personal trainer or whatever. This is probably one of the best advices that I will give to you if you are one of those people that has all of those issues that can't take a day off because of whatever is going on with your mental health. 
this piece of advice that I've just sort of stumbled upon, holy fuck, it's a game changer for me. So when I force myself to take time off and I zone out and get away from work and I put my mind somewhere else, out of nowhere, I get this massive inspiration for, what if I did this? What if I do this? What if the business did this? And it comes in little random bouts and spurts of inspiration of what about this? Write it in my phone. I don't action it then and there. I write it in my phone and describe it as best that I can in my phone. And then I come back to my notes on Monday and read it. And if I read it and I go, what the fuck is that? Then I know that it's not that great. But if I read it and go, that's still a good idea. Then it's something that I present to the team and say, hey, ladies, what do we think about this? And then they can pick it apart and be like, you're a fucking idiot. Don't worry about this. It's going to be too much work. You've already got 12 different projects on. Don't worry about it because we fucking hate you. We don't want more work. And I'm like, oh, excellent. Um, that's essentially what happens. Uh, however's now that I'm taking this time off, now that I'm forcing myself to take time off and my brain is going elsewhere, I'm actually coming back into work and I'm being more productive with the time that I have. Now that I'm more productive with the time that I have, I'm looking at my entire calendar and going, instead, how can I fill this up? I'm going, how can I reduce this but still get the same level of work done that I had done previously? So now looking at my calendar, I'm actually gonna swap over to my calendar because it's all beautifully color coordinated and everything. Um, no, that's in June, take me to today. Take me today. Ooh, that sounded wrong. Uh, so getting to today. What have I got today? One, two, three, four, five, six clients. So from 2.15 through to 6.45 p.m. That's today, obviously, as I've said before, I've got about 10 to 12 clients that are finishing up between now and July, and I'm not doing that because obviously I need to have more time to be able to do stuff. Previously, I would have in the middle here, why am I talking as if you can see my calendar? <laughs> I've got six clients this afternoon. Normally, I would have filled up all of that time with work. Obviously podcasting, yes, that's work, but filled it up with, I have to do this, I should be doing this, I should be doing that, I have to do that. And just a whole bunch of different busy work so that I can be like, yeah, worked fucking 12 hours today. Absolutely killed it. Hustling for that jet. No. I would have also done that on Saturday where I don't have a whole lot going on and that's typically where I make sure that I've finalized everyone's check-ins, that I have clients in the morning, that I'm at the gym, that I'm using an office space that isn't this office space, it is typically the gym. Doing that, I would have tried to stretch that out as much as I can. But now that I'm in the headspace of it's okay to have time off and the reason that it's okay to have time off is because when I get back into work, I feel so much more fucking productive, I have more clarity over what is important, what is urgent, what needs to be done. I don't have a 100 item to-do list that needs to be done through the entire week. Now, I have a list of four to five things that I want done in that day or in that week that are urgent and important to get done. Everything else can wait. So now that I have this clarity of when I rest, that means that I have a lot more capacity to come into work and focus on the things that I actually want to be focusing on. And I can say with, without a single doubt that this is the thing that I want to do. This is the thing that I want to do after that. These are the things that I need done by this certain time. Oh my God, it has been an absolute game changer. Instead of here's everything I want done, I'm now building, like putting it into the hours of how can I make the most of my time because I know that it is getting to the point for me, particularly for self-employed people, uh, it's just, you don't know where that detachment is. You don't know where the point of I'm working, I'm not working folds. Because I know you'll get a message at like 8.30 at night on a Saturday and you'll be like, oh, I have to respond to this right now. Even if you're completely fucking blind drunk and you'll be like, oh, fuck, I gotta respond to it. I can't do it because that's a client and I want to give me money. For the love of God, don't do that doesn't go well. <laughs> but now that I'm operating under, under the pretense, instead of I have all of these things that I need to do in all of this time through the week that I have to do, now I'm looking at it as I have this finite amount of time that I have. Let's just say, I'm just going to say 10 hours for, for math's sake, because I can't be fucked doing how many hours I actually have. I have 10 hours through the week of which I need to get things done. 
which things can I do in that 10 hours because I know it's going to run out. And if it does run out and I haven't done it by a particular time, I'm fucked. I have 10 hours. What are the top three things I need done for myself, my clients, and then my business and coaches and employees? What are the things that I need done in this week for us to take a step forward that week? Because each week is one step forward. That's how fucking slow it feels. Each week, not one day or one hour or one fucking task. It's each week is one step forward. How was that week? Fantastic. Awesome. What can we do for next week? Awesome. Go to take the step next week. Now that I know or it has that feeling of there is a finite amount of time in the week for me to be working on, it's taken so much pressure off me mentally to be able to say it's okay to rest. It's okay to recover. It's okay to not work because when I don't work, and I come back into work, that's where I get the most shit done. That's where I am the most productive and that's where I am the most efficient and effective. If I'm working for the sake of working, that actually damages my clients and my work and the type or quality of work that my clients are receiving. Because if I'm working all the way through, that's me operating at about 20% each day. Whereas if I take time off, that's me operating at 90% each day because I can come into each day feeling fueled, refreshed, and just ready to fucking kill it. But if I don't have that time off to repair myself or to recover or to mentally be like, right, what do I do today? That's where I feel like I'm completely failing. I can't believe And I know this is a whole thing. I can't believe that I've been telling myself this for four, five, six years. I have to rest. I have to do this. I have to do this. Yeah, but, and then continuing to work. And it's taken me five to six fucking years to figure this out of when I rest as a consequence, when I force myself to take time off as a consequence, I am more productive and more efficient and better at my job when I work. So if across the week, Monday to Sunday, that's 100%, I can get more done off the back of taking time off. I can get 120% of work done as opposed to the 100% being stretched out across seven days. And it's just hitting me, well, when I got the idea for this podcast, it's just hit me that it's not the resting and recovering that I enjoy. Like, yes, I'm starting to enjoy it now that I'm actually getting it and it's consistent. But at the start, when people are just telling you, you can't pour from an empty cup, you have to take time for yourself. We know that. The exact same reason why everybody signs up to the program. I know what I need to do, but I just can't do it. I know that I need to take rest, but I just can't do it. This business is my baby. This business is my career. This business is literally everything that I have suffered and worked for. So I'm not going to let it fail. Therefore, I'm going to put in all the work that I possibly can to be able to make sure that it doesn't fail. However, it's that perspective shift of it's not me taking rest because I need to rest. It's me not working because I know that when I don't work, I work better. That's how I've sort of positioned it in my head to be able to accept that it's okay to rest and uh, not work and recover. And I can't believe I'm so pissed at myself (laughs) that it's taken me six years to realize this, to have two days off in a row and not cry about it. Holy fuck. Uh, Yeah. So I hope this is helping someone out there because this is just me coaching myself at the moment and I'm like, fuck. So it's not the, uh, it's not the, I know what I need to do. It's how do we do it? It's switching that mindset around. What is the consequence of you not doing it? What is the consequence of you doing it? The consequence of me resting and taking time for myself and my partner and all these other fucking things that I enjoy doing. Um, the consequence of that is business becomes a lot more productive, efficient and higher quality. So in order for me to get a better business, I need to be able to rest and recover. 
Oh my god, I am mad. <laughs> if this were a Disney movie right now, if this was a cartoon, there would be like fumes coming out of your speakers or headphones or like through the fucking, through the vents of your car or whatever it is. You would be able to feel my frustration. You'd be like, oh, the stereo is getting a bit hot. This podcast must be lit. That's what, I don't know who the fuck would say that in a Disney movie. Anyway, this is becoming a whole thing because I'm blowing my mind and I'm like, holy fuck. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to leave it there because I'm going to keep coaching myself and keep coming up with these revelations and it's going to look fucking hilarious. Anywho, I hope you all have the best day in the world. I hope that helped in some sort of weird fashion. What is the consequence of doing something? What is the consequence of not doing something? Weigh them up and make the decision as opposed to, I know what I need to do, but I'm just not doing it because of this reason. What are the consequences of both actions? And holy shit, that is a game changer for me. And I hope it is a game changer for you. So all the best, much love, rate, review, subscribe, like, share, comment, whatever it is to help us out, to help get this podcast up and ranking it. Uh, yeah, I hope you have the best time in the world. I'll speak to you all soon.